What's the crack lads and welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another video. I am literally getting so many questions about training players, getting the best version of the players, you know, why I train certain players to be a lower, a lower overall um, when I could get, you know, a 99 rated Messi. Instead, I have a 97 rated Messi. Like, why aren't I getting the 99 rated Messi? Like, why am I training players a certain way? And loads of newcomers coming across then as well that are downloading the game for the first time over the Christmas period, jumping on and, you know, making all these mistakes because this obsession with player overall, man, and getting the highest overall player rating on a card is is crazy. It makes no sense. And to be honest with you, a lot of people that are obsessed with it, they don't play the game genuinely. And that's not throwing shade at anybody. That's, you know, not like talking shit or anything like that. Genuinely. It's people that don't play the game and they're like, oh, sure, a 99 rated Messi has to be better than a 96 rated Messi. Not necessarily, right? So, yeah, don't be obsessed with player overall ratings. This is genuinely probably the most requested video I get weekly, even though I've already done one where we focused on this man, Kamavinga, that's on your screens at the moment. We are going to do a more in-depth look at it. And I'm going to show you three, four, maybe five examples of players of why you should not focus on a max overall when you're when you're training your players you should focus on how the player you want how you want the player to perform in the position he's playing and also what stats are important for that role in your squad right so if we're going to be taking a look at Kamavinga here what do you want your center midfielder to do right I'll give you a quick example a very quick example here right so this is just a very average squad this is a hundred team play style level squad right and it's a very defined squad so we've got a 4 2 2 2 and we've got, you know, a right back, left back, two center backs, a DMF, CMF, AMF, right mid and left mid, right? Or left wing, right? Right mid, left wing, right? So we've also got a striker up front. So it's kind of a higgledy-piggledy kind of formation, right? But the roles in this squad are going to be very clearly defined as to what I want each player to do, right? So this is the first port of call when you are training players up, right? Just focusing on our midfielders here, right? We want Pedri to be, when we're training Pedri up, right? If we have Pedri. We want Pedri to be our AMF. What's our AMF going to do? Well, he's going to be linking up with Salah. He's going to be linking up with the wingers. And he's going to be getting the ball forward. So he's going to be dribbling. He's going to be passing. He's going to be shooting. He's going to be doing everything. So for the stats that we want for him, we're going to focus on dribbling, ball control, you know, speed, acceleration, balance, everything that we can possibly do. We don't need to focus too much on defense because we're not going to be using him as our center mid. We're going to be using him in a very defined role, right? Similarly, we've got Goretzka, who's back as a centre midfielder and going to be our box-to-box -box demon. That's going to be covering every blade of grass, Michael Essien type style, you know, Sadar style, David style. He's going to be covering every blade of grass, breaking up tackles, breaking up players' legs, breaking up the ball, blocking, you know, like disrupting, passing, bringing the ball forward. So he needs to be well-rounded, well-balanced. He needs to have defensive stats. He needs to have attacking stats. He needs to have speed. He needs to have passing. He needs to have dribbling. Not everything needs to be brilliant. Now, you know, he doesn't need 85 plus on low passing or 85 on ball control or tight possession um, or speed or acceleration, but he needs to be like mid 80s on the main stats that he has, such as physical contact, tackling, uh, defensive awareness and offensive awareness, you know, between 75 and 80 um, and all that sort of stuff, right? So that's the role that we're going to be playing. And then Makalele as our DMF, we don't need to focus too much on dribbling. We don't need to focus too much on passing. All we need to focus on with Makalele is breaking up the ball and being an outright defender, sitting in the pocket and just breaking up those tacks if Goretzka can't cover the gaps, right? And just sitting in that anchorman role and just distributing the ball everywhere that you possibly can and then going from there. So just focusing on the three of them, right? Because center midfield and this attacker midfield, DMF, AMF, CMF tripod is a very key one, right? And this applies for any formation. So when we go back to Kamavinga, if we were to slot Kamavinga in here, it depends how we're going to train him into what role we want. If we want to play him in the Pedri role, we're going to focus on his dribbling, his passing, and his ability to bring the ball forward in a very well-rounded way. If we want him as our engine man instead of Goretzka, we're not going to focus on that. We're going to focus on getting his stamina up, his passing up, and his defensive side of the game up. So that's the first decision that you make. I wouldn't play Pedri here and Goretzka here because it's it's a disservice to two players. I wouldn't play Diaz here because Diaz is, you know, going to be blistering pace, but he's not going to have the passing. 
So that's the way you have to train your team. That's the first port of call when you are looking to develop a player. You know what I mean? That's the best way of doing it. Pick the position, pick your formation, pick all that. And then you start training your players to what role they need to play in your squad. So we've got a brand new Camavinga here. We've got a level one Camavinga, but we've also got a level one Camavinga with 82 progression points, fully trained up. We just haven't used any of the training points, right? So we've got 82 progression points here when we go into the player progression, right? So this is a big mistake people are making, right? Any training guide that you're following or anything that you're seeing where, you know, people are people are saying like, oh, you know, you can get a 91 rated Camavinga. He's a monster, I will show you why that logic is wrong and it is it's information from people that literally do not play the game man it has to be because if you played the game you would understand what formation you're playing what role your player needs to play in and also how you're going to train him because you know how he handles on the pitch as I said before you're not going to turn Camavinga in to Luka Modric if you want Luka Modric buy Luka Modric you're not going to turn Camavinga into Messi because his stats will not go in that way you're not going to get 92 94 whatever it is dribbling or ball control that Messi can get so you need to turn Camavinga in to Camavinga 2.0 the best version of Camavinga that you possibly can now all these training guys that you're looking at and all these max ratings and this obsession with max rating they're using Konami's auto allocate when we press square here, you'll see it in the bottom right of the screen. When we press square to auto allocate, it says allocated automatically. And this is an algorithm that Konami use to get the max rating on the player card. So Kamavinga goes to a level 91. And you're thinking, you know, I'm talking shit here by saying that a 91 rated Kamavinga can't be, you know, worse than an 89 rated Kamavinga. But look at the role that we want him to play and go through the stats that is auto allocated here, right? We've got a 91 rated Camavinga, yeah, but look at the stats that they've actually auto allocated in to get him to that 91 level. And like, think about it, what role we want to play. Do we want Camavinga in as our Pedri type or do we want him in as a Goretzka type, right? If we want him in as our Pedri type, this is actually a quite solid build. And I would just say, right, we don't need any defense here because we're not going to be playing him in that role. We can take all of that down. We can also take this down as well, his speed, his kicking power and his stamina. And we can just boost that up to acceleration. And then from there, we can also boost this up a little bit here and then finish it off with maybe that. And then we can obviously add just one to shooting. That's not going to really make a difference. Or we can add one to team play style proficiency. That's not going to make a massive difference. But there's our Pedri type Camavinga who does not go to a level 91. He goes to a level 90. So that's our level 90 Camavinga there. He's not a level 91. So he's not the best max version of Camavinga. 91 is better than 90. But this is a way better version of Camavinga for playing that Pedri role. Similarly, right, if we want to go back and use the auto allocation again to get back our 91, if we want to go back and think, right, well, I want a Goretzka type player to come in off the bench for Goretzka. Goretzka is going to start, but we want Camavinga as our box to box demon, going to be breaking up everything and going to be basically just a sub to sub in for the role that Goretzka is playing in our main squad. Okay, well, we don't need to pass in that high because we're going to be covering more ground than, um, than passing, right? We don't need our dribbling that high because we just need to be able to get the ball out of our feet. So once our ball control and passing is at around the 80 mark, our low pass and our ball control is at the 80 mark, then the rest of the stats that we're going to be using is going to be just covering every blade of grass, right? So we can pump in a few into that. We can go 16 levels on that to bring up our stamina to 89 and our speed to 84, and then we can just decide whether we want to go defensive or we want to go dexterity. We can either go both. We can go both, lads. It's not a problem. We can obviously go there and do three into that to get our defensive side of the game up. We also could reduce this a little bit and go more defensive there to have a more well-rounded well version of Kamavinga. That is how I would train Kamavinga up if you wanted him as a disruptor, a Goretzka type player or a Barella type player or something like that. But look at the overall rating, 89 overall. So you have to be careful in how you're training players up. And that is my tip for that. And if we were to kind of extend that out and look at Lionel Messi, right? This is Messi as a 99 rated version Messi, okay? But look at the progression points that are allocated here. This is the auto allocated version of Messi that the game will give you, that the Konami algorithm will give you when they're training up the players in that auto allocation that we just looked at, right? We're going to put four into shooting, four into passing, 12 into dribbling, eight into dexterity and eight into lower body strength. But is this the best version of Messi? Well, number one, are you going to be playing Messi as an AMF? Are you going to be playing Messi as a right wing? Are you going to be playing Messi as a shooter, as a center forward? 
I would say here that it's a disservice to Messi not to boost up his shooting. It's also a disservice to have his dribbling that high. You do not need dribbling or any stat over 90. Trust me, lads, you don't need any stat over 90 unless you have like, you know, 96 acceleration with 96 awareness and 96 dribbling for an outright winger. But if you're looking for a player that's going to be one of your main men, you do not need any stat over 90 unless it's an exceptional case, right? All these stats are fairly decent. Now, what I would do to train Messi up here is I'm going to show you from scratch, right? So we're going to focus on Messi's uh, curling and finishing. We want Messi's curling to be at least an 85, which brings his finishing up to 91. We want his passing, which is quite high. We just want to get that to 82 because we're not going to be focused too much on passing with Messi, you know, in the role that we're going to be playing him. Dribbling, obviously, can go to 90 here. With the ball control, not an 89 dribbling, 89 tight possession, we'll see how it goes there as well. The biggest thing with Messi's card is his stamina, that the game doesn't really kind of do with the auto allocation, right? So we're going to pump 10 into stamina, and we're going to pump 9 into dexterity to give us a 98 rated version of Messi. But we've got 91 finishing, 94 offensive awareness, 90 ball control, 93 balance, 87 acceleration, and 82 stamina. Now we've had to use a lot into stamina. We could get away with 80, um, 80 and 81 stamina and pump a couple of more into shooting. If you shoot a lot with Messi, still going to get a 98 overall. Or you could pump another one into dexterity if you wanted to get that acceleration up to 88 and offensive awareness up to 95. But again, we don't have a 99 rated version of Messi there. Last example that we have here, our second last example, we'll do one or two more just to round this video off. We have a 96 rated Gavardiol who's going to be, you know, have eight, po eight points into aerial strength, 14 in, in, in defending, but only four in dexterity and lower body strength. Now, again, when I look at training him up, I'm going to focus on Gavardiol because I know he's not going to get 90 with a lot of his stats here. Once we get our 90 with defensive engagement, once we get to 90 defensive awareness, tackle and aggression, we're going to leave that. We're not going to focus on anything here apart from four into jump and just to get the physical contact up. So we're not going to pump in a lot into that. And then we're just going to bring up that to an 82. And then we're going to bring the rest up there as well to an 84. So that I would say is a better version of him, even though he's only 95 overall. So it's just about looking at what players you have, looking at what role they want to be in your squad and then going from there. We also have somebody like Perisic, right? Perisic is an out-and-out -out winger, but he's not a speed demon. Most of the wingers are speed demons. So even if we were to pump up every single stat into dexterity and get 16 there, we're still not going to crack 90 acceleration. So why bother? Why actually bother waste all those stats or all those progression points when you're never going to get blister and pace from him either, you know? Um, you can just focus on his passing, which is what he's, he's really good at doing, crossing the ball in, bring that up, it's not going to bring up his um, his overall as high as it would. Like, look, you can put A progression points into that, into passing, and it's only going to bring it up one overall. But when you do the dribbling, it's going to bring it up a lot because that's obviously his position and that's his role. But you're going to have a very good version of him here if you just focus on um, these stats. You're going to have a 92 rated player there. Um, but if you just focused on, say, if you take away passing, right, you can get a player... That's still going to be 92, but you can obviously have a different version of him there if you wanted to, because you're going to be focused on the dexterity with 9, 9, and 8 into his dribbling dexterity and lower body. So yeah, lads, look, it's a long video. It's a lot of information. Um, just process it all. And as I said, take away that you don't need to focus on the max overall levels of the players. I've done this so many times before. We've talked about it before. But yeah, until next time, lads, I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know if you have any other questions and I will talk to you in a bit. Peace. Have a good one.